In this video, we'll be going over the bottom-up matrix approach of minimum path sum. So let's go over the thought process. So let's convert the top-down memorization approach to a bottom-up approach. Now, where do we start? In the memorization approach, we have cached the current row and column with the minimum path sum, which we'll call min sum. This means we can create a 2D matrix min sum to keep track of the minimum path sum for all combinations of RC. Keep track of the for all combinations of RC. Now it asks us that what, what are the default values inside the min sum matrix? When RC is at the bottom right corner, this means we have no more paths to, we, um, we cannot go forward to any, um, we cannot go rightward and we cannot go downward anymore. So the value that's left will be the value at the cell. The default value will be red RC. Now let's go over the pseudocode. So we're gonna create a 2D matrix. Create 2D matrix min sum to keep track the minimum sum all combination of RC. Then we're gonna iterate through the indices from grid length minus one to zero, denoted as R. We're iterating through the rows. Now we gotta iterate through the columns. Grid R down length minus one to zero. Denoted as C. Now, if R and C is at the bottom right corner, we're going to set min sum RC to grid RC because we cannot go in any more direction. So it's just going to be the default value at the cell. And we're going to continue to the next iteration. Then, if R is not at the last row, this means we can go downward. So before that, we're gonna say set min sum RC to a very large value. So to integer that max value, we'll be updating this as we go rightward or downward. If R is not the last row, this means we can go downward. So we're gonna update the current minimum sum. If the sum of going downward is smaller, if min sum of going downward R plus one plus grid RC, the current cell, is smaller. Then if C is not at the last column, that means we can go rightward. So we're going to update the minimum sum if going rightward is smaller. Then we can return the minimum sum starting from 0, 0, which is the initial starting position. Because we initially start from top left and then we're trying to go to the bottom right corner. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. The time complexity is MN where MN are the, no, are the number of rows and columns. This is for the nested for loop. The space complexity is also MN. This is because of the min sum matrix. Now let's go over the code. So we're, we're gonna create our the row and column first, MN. Now we're gonna create our min sum matrix to keep track of the minimum sum path for all combinations of RC. And we're gonna iterate through the rows. And then iterate through the columns. Then if if we're currently if we're currently at the bottom right corner, then we only have the value at the cell. If R go to M minus one and C is go to M minus one or the bottom right corner, so min sum of RC will be just the value at the current cell. Then we're gonna continue to the next iteration. Now we're gonna set a very large value at the current minimum path sum and update it as we go leftward or uh, as we go rightward or downward. Then if R is not equal to M minus one, 
this means we can go downward. So we're going to update the mem sum. If if we can uh, if we can find a smaller sum going downward. Then if n if c is not in the last column, that means we can go rightward. So when so when update the minimum sum if the minimum sum of going rightward is smaller, then we can return the minimum sum starting from the top left corner. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.